In this video, we'll show how to use TechPlot's data alter feature to specify equations and smooth data in XY plots. Here I have the gasifier training example, and this has already been run in my directory, so I have a full set of output data. And so let's go ahead and open TechPlot, and we'll use this launch TechPlot button to open an empty interface with no data loaded at first. We'll use File, Load Barracuda Data, and here we want to load data file because we're making an XY plot in this case. Um, for our example, we will use the Cyclone 1 uh, pressure file, which is a flux plane at the face of the cyclone. So we'll go ahead and open that. When we do this, by default, it will load in column 1 versus column 2. Column 1 is time, column 2 is fluid mass flow rate. Um, and the first thing that we want to show how to do is to invert this data. Uh, the sign convention is bar in Barracuda is that at boundary condition flux planes, uh, fluid or particles flowing out of the system is shown as negative values. Um, but a lot of times when we make a plot or we communicate this with people, um, it's easier to talk about it as positive values. And so we'll show how to do that. Uh, if we go to data, alter, specify equations, this will bring up an interface where we can type in uh, a lot of different things to manipulate the data. If you want full documentation on this, click this help button and it'll bring up the TechPlot user manual with uh, full details of the syntax and all of the different operators that are available. For our example, the important thing to know is about curly bracket syntax. Um, so any variables that you refer to have to be inside of these curly brackets and they have to be exactly spelled the same as the variable name from the data set. So what I always do is I click this data set info button, it brings up this interface, and if you double click the variable name that you're interested in, it will highlight it, you can copy that name exactly, and you can paste it in between these curly brackets. Oh, I missed my curly brackets, so I'm gonna move that over there. So here, curly bracket, fluid mass flow rate, kilograms per second, curly bracket, equals, and all we want to do here is invert the data. So I'm going to do minus one times curly bracket and paste in that variable name one more time. So this is um, how we would write this equation. So if we click compute, it'll give you a message. If it's successful, we say okay. Uh, we can see here the data kind of disappeared from our view because it uh, became positive. So if I hit control F, it'll rescale the axes and we'll see that this data is now on the positive side and um, that's what this equation did. Uh, one thing that's nice about equations is that you can save them into a file and reuse them at a later time. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you click Save Equations, um, you can give your equation any name you want, but in this case I'm just going to be a little bit descriptive and say Invert Fluid Mass Flow and hit enter. Okay, so that'll save that equation into my current directory and I can reuse that at a later point. I'm going to go ahead and close this and open a new blank tech plot and the next thing I want to show is how to add multiple uh, zones together um, and what we'll do is again we'll stick with these cyclone flux planes. Uh, this training example has four cyclones so if we load Barracuda data we can load data for all four of their flux planes at the same time. Uh, we do have a tech plot for Barracuda training video that covers this in depth, um, so I'm going to go a little bit fast here. But if you're interested in learning more about this, find the video that's called Plotting XY Data from Multiple Files, and it will cover this. Um, so here I selected all four of these files at the same time by clicking while I was holding the control key. I'm going to go ahead and click Open. And what this will do is it will load all four sets of data into this plot. And by default, it'll show us uh, column one versus column two for cyclone number one. And so we should see this show up. And OK, all of the data has been loaded, but we're really only seeing one cyclone at the moment. So if we click mapping style, it will bring up this interface. I'm going to make this a little bit wider so we can just see fully uh, where the zones are that the data is coming from. So currently we're getting fluid mass flow rate. Column X is time, column Y is fluid mass flow rate. 
and the zone is flux BC cyclone number one pressure. So if we want to show all four cyclones at once, you can double click on the zone cell and you can select cyclone number two. You can go down to the next cell, select cyclone number three. Next one, select cyclone number four. And then here, if we click the y-axis variable or double click it, um, you can make sure that all of them are referring to the column number two from their respective files. Okay, so all of those are now referring to fluid mass flow rate. I'll close this. Okay, we can see now there are four curves, and each of them is fluid mass flow rate through the various cyclone inlets that we have. Um, I want to show loading in that equation that we just saved a few minutes ago. So if you go back to data, alter, specified equations, we can load the equation for inverting fluid mass flow. And the nice thing about this is that it's referring to the fluid mass flow by its variable name, and this variable name is the same in all four cyclones. So if we click Compute to run this equation, we'll see when I hit Control F to rescale the axes, all four data sets have been inverted, so all of them are positive values now. To add up all of these flow rates, uh, what we'll do is we'll get rid of the variable name over on the left hand side and we'll create a new variable that does not yet exist. So we'll call this total fluid mass flow. And when you do this uh, on the left hand side of an equation, it will create a new variable based on the calculation that you're specifying on the right hand side. So I'm going to get rid of my minus one times. And the new notation that you need to be aware of here is a square bracket notation instead of curly brackets. So if we do square bracket one and then close the square bracket, this refers to the fluid mass flow rate data from zone number one, which in our case corresponds to cyclone number one. So I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to change it to a two. I'm going to hit plus, paste it one more time, change it to a three, plus, paste it one more time, change it to a four. So this is adding up the fluid mass flow rates from cyclones one, two, three, and four, and assigning the result to this new variable, total fluid mass flow. So I'll go ahead and hit compute. Data alteration was successful. I'll go back to my mapping style. And for this uh, map number five, I'm going to double click the Y variable. And if we scroll to the bottom, we'll see that this is the new variable that we just calculated. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to click my checkbox to make sure that map is shown. And if I do a control F one more time to scale the axes, we can see that this orange line is the sum of the other four lines. So this is how you can add data from multiple flux planes or multiple other files together and calculate a total. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this one so we can cover the final topic in this video. Let's launch TechPlot one more time, again with no data loaded, just to clearly show what's happening here. And what I want to show here is data smoothing. So we'll load Barracuda data, we'll load a data file, and again, let's go back to cyclone number one for this example. We'll open that. And again, by default, it's going to show us a fluid mass flow rate curve. Um, however, some users are probably familiar with this. If you try to show particle mass flow rate instead of fluid mass flow rate, we'll do that. I'll hit close. We'll do a control F. Um, this is what particle mass flow rate data looks like sometimes, especially at cyclone inlets where on some time steps you have no particles exiting, so the flow rate is zero. And at other time steps you have a lot of particles exiting, so the flow rate can be kind of high. And you get kind of this really dense plot with a lot of spikes. And it's hard to tell exactly what the flow rate really is, kind of on average. So one way to help with this is you can smooth this data by averaging uh, neighboring points together and TechPlot has a functionality to do this. So if you choose Data, Alter, Smooth, it will bring up this interface. Um, in this case, we only have one zone loaded, so that's fine. But we are working on a different variable. So instead of fluid mass flow rate, let's choose particle mass flow rate. 
And what I found works pretty well is something like a thousand passes or sometimes 10,000 passes. You may have to try a few different values. Um, but in this case, a thousand passes and a coefficient of 0 0.95 will um, be kind of aggressive with averaging neighbors together and it'll give it enough passes to really clean up this data. Um, so we'll go ahead and click the button that says smooth. You'll see a little progress bar go across at the bottom while it's working on this. Smoothing was successful. Okay. And then this is the smooth data that is much easier to read, right? And it gives us a much better idea of what our average particle flow rate is at this cyclone. And so uh, this can be a, a really great tool, especially when looking at particle flow rates at flux planes. If it's really noisy, use this data smoothing capability to uh, help clean that up. Okay, and that concludes this video on using a few of these data alter functions in TechPlot for Barracuda.